In the previous lesson, we started to talk about materials in Redshift for Cinema 4D, and we experimented with the basic channels, basic parameters, and basic effects, like the diffuse, the glossiness, the roughness, the metalness uh, values, and so on. So we started with uh, a couple of uh, subjects here to represent liquids and also emissive uh, uh, property for for the materials that can turn anything into a light, like this uh, kind of a splash effect. And also transparency and translucency to create liquids again, or um, glasses or jams. And you can apply, like in this uh, left uh, splash, you can apply also the emissive to something that it's uh, like glass, so it looks like a lamp. So um, I'm going to continue in this lesson to talk about materials, but we're going to explore now the Redshift editor. So first of all, I'm going to open up the material uh, manager, the material panel here. And if I double click now, you can see that I'm opening the node editor. Now this sometimes could happen and it's not so different uh, from the Redshift node editor. So if I go to Redshift materials and I create a new standard here. Now in this video, I also want to use the standard which doesn't have the, the, the presets because um, the standard one is the current one actually but if I double click again it's not going to op open the Redshift editor so um, this is something you can adjust you can set if you want in the preferences so if we go in the preferences render Redshift you see here in the user interface I use global attributes uh, for shader nodes I can turn this off and I think that's by default it's off and also here node materials for presets I can turn that off as well so now it should open the the Redshift instead of the Cinema 4D node editor they are pretty similar you can use both but we're gonna use the Redshift one here also in the material you can decide if you want to have an, a, a node based material and also a default material which could be the RS shader graph as well as the standard or others. So let's set up your RS shader graph. Now again these are not mandatory you can decide if you want to do these settings or not. Let's create again a new material I'm going to create a new standard material we're not going to use the previous type of material which was the ones with the presets and there you go now if I double click it's going to open the Redshift instead of the node editor. We're going to use this one because it's native, it's from Redshift. But again, uh, you can decide if you want to go back to the Cinema 4D node editor. Now on the left side, we have the, the nodes. On the right side, we have the parameters and the channels, like the base, the reflection, the transparency or transmission, wh where we can set up also the refraction. And then we have subsurface coloring, so translucency. We have uh, the sheen effect again. A thin film we can apply on top, a coat which, which is a kind of an extra layer, and the emission for the light effect, and finally the geometry. So we have all these to work with already. We don't need to do anything but start to apply some effects. So um, in the previous video, instead we use the Redshift material, not the Redshift standard. So don't confuse them because they're pretty similar. If you see they're, they're, the, the names will change slightly. So the, 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 the top layer will be called diffuse. And here we have the presets, which are pretty handy at the beginning to understand and to start. But then if you want to move forward into more advanced features, you can go here in the editor. And so I'm going to continue a little bit with this orc statue we found on TurboSquid. Now this is also the splash, again we found on the previous lesson, and that's also a nice uh, sci-fi motion graphics uh, with it, uh, with an emissive material. We didn't use this, but you know just to show you that you can do a lot of things with materials, a lot of effects. And we also talk about the difference between the diffuse effect and the specular effect. So the diffuse it's usually the the top layer, which is also called color sometimes. And then we said that roughness is the opposite of glossiness, and we have some textures already here. 
And then also the metal mass. We talk about the metal mass, the various type of reflections and transmission or transparency to do, you know, different effects like water or um, honey or blood. You can, you know, change the transmission and translucency settings. I'm going to show you that a little bit also here before we get into uh, the textures because you can use simple values, you can use simple colors, or you can use textures. Or actually, you can, have, you can use maps. So the texture is a type of map that is composed by pixels, while you also have the possibility to, your, to work with procedural maps, which are made of, we can say, like um, parameters. They are not actually pixels, so you can modify them directly in your software. You can use this in 3ds Max or in uh, Blender or wherever, so you can find this type of uh, maps in Cinema 4D, Redshift, and any other software or render engine. Now I'm going to get rid of some of the models here because I want to concentrate on a single one. We don't need to do more than that. So I'm going to click and drag this new standard material on top of my statue here, and I will delete the previous material or I can drag and drop in the object panel directly on the previous material to replace it. So now we have this new standard and we can go directly in the graph editor, uh, shader graph or node editor, you can call it however you like. And there you go. So if we want to work the usual way we have on the right side, well, it, some names can change. Like instead of diffuse, we have base instead of you know, others, we may have other names, but on in the end, they're going to work the same. So I'm going to start my Redshift render inside the viewport. And this is, as you can see, kind of a glossy plastic effect. Now, before we leave the, the previous material, which it's also called the legacy material, which means that it refers to previous versions. And so you can use them, but sooner or later, there will be left behind, but you can see all these main uh, presets that are really handy for you to start. So before you leave this section, you can go in the manual. You, if you want to know more, you can see here also with the standard material, if you want to know more about all the single parameters, because there are, there are really many parameters in there. So I cannot explain everything, but if you go in there, there are a lot of examples to help you understand how each parameter works. So you don't need to like spend hours and hours experimenting, even though I think it's always good. And then you have also the other type of materials here if you want to know more about them. So this is just to show you that we're gonna proceed with the, the standard, but uh, you can still use the, the legacy material, the legacy default material. Now, here we have again the diffuse, the reflection, the transmission. So let's work a little bit with the transmission. So if I increase here the value, that's going to create a glass, as we already know. But uh, make sure you adjust also the roughness, which is supposed to be low. If it's high, it's going to be like, uh, well, not a clean glass. It's going to be like uh, highs or something like that. So you can see the difference. If you drop it down, you're going to see the, the nice transparency. So remember that you can go from 0 to 1 on the value. You can go also from black to white in the color, and that's going to work as a value because black means 0, white means 1. So uh, when you have a parameter, let's work also with the depth because the depth is kind of a scattering effect again, kind of a subsurface sub scattering effect. It's basically applying a color inside the, the object. So if I use the scatter color here, you can see the, the effect right away. So it's kind of filling up that empty glass statue with the color. And if you change the depth, well, it's going to change how deep you go with that color, in, basically, or, or with that scattering. So by adjusting the depth, the scatter color, and also the, the samples that are important and the weight, you can have different results. So reflections and transparency are the more complex effects to achieve. So you probably want to have a look again 
to each single parameter in the in the manual if you want to handle those